Hello, and welcome to the IDEX webinar, Generating New Revenues from Testing for Legionella Pneumophila. This is part two in a two-part series on this topic. In part one, we covered the market opportunity for Legionella Pneumophila testing, testing in the context of a water management plan, and legal considerations for laboratories beginning this Legionella Pneumophila testing business. That webinar is available through IDEX. Today we'll cover how to get accredited with Leech Alert, how to identify and use water management plan partners and tools to help build your testing business, and marketing strategies you can use to grow your Legionella pneumophila testing sales. We'll finish up with about 10 minutes for question and answers at the end. The slides from the section on getting accredited and marketing will be available after the webinar, and Matt will tell you more about how you can get more information on the materials he'll be sharing on water management planning. You can submit a question to any of our speakers at any point during the webinar by clicking on the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. We're honored today to have several excellent presenters. Patsy Root, Regulatory Affairs Manager for IDEX North America, is also a member of ASHRAE 188 and NSF 444 and is a member of the Executive Board of Standards for TNI. Matt Frigi is the founder and CEO of HCINFO, where he has been helping facility owners, testing laboratories, and water management planners reduce Legionnaire's disease risk for more than 20 years. I'm Kristen, the Leisure Alert Product Manager worldwide for IDEX, and I've been providing strategic guidance to companies large and small for more than 20 years. Without further ado, I'll pass the microphone to Patsy. Well, thank you, Kristen, for the lovely introduction. I appreciate that and being asked to participate in the webinar. Um, the topic that I'm going to cover today is laboratory accreditation for Legal Alert and pretty much three aspects associated with the accreditation process, including um, why it matters to your customers, um, which accreditations are relevant um, in association with Legion Alert, and the steps to achieve accreditation for uh, Legionella pneumophila testing. So what are the benefits of laboratory accreditation? Um, the first one is, is the most important to me, is that it assures the customers of your documented technical competence. Um, that you understand how to follow the procedures for the methods and you've been shown to do them appropriately. Um, another benefit is that in, it includes traceability of your samples and your data, um, everything from sample receipt in the laboratory to the reporting of your data back to the customer. Accreditation also allows the laboratory to submit data for regulated programs. Um, very few programs are associated with Legionella pneumophila testing right now. Um, you know, maybe that will change down the road, but certainly all the other EPA programs require laboratories to be accredited to submit data. Being accredited also makes contract work available to your laboratory. Um, your customers, I'm sure you've seen, understand the benefits um, of laboratory accreditation and when they put out uh, requests for quotations, they typically include the fact that the laboratory should be accredited. And also being accredited provides you, the laboratory, with some level of protection if your data is questioned. Before we start talking about accreditation, I'd like to just talk a little bit about the Centers for Disease Control Certification uh, Elite Program versus accreditation, because I've gotten a lot of questions about that over the past few months. So what the CDC Elite Program is, is it's a certificate that a laboratory can get if they can successfully find Legionella in a prepared water sample. Accreditation, however, is third-party audit-based. Um, it requires that you provide evidence of both your technical and your managerial capability. It also requires that you have quality system checks to prove that you have full technical capability, 
um, that you've performed method verification inside your laboratory for each method. You have quality control measures in place to ensure the method is performing correctly. You participate in proficiency testing. You do demonstration of capability for all of the analytes that you have on your scope of accreditation and all the as other aspects of accreditation. But um, on a side note, I do want to also mention that coming in March, um, the Leech Alert method will be a method that you can also uh, report data in for the CDC Elite program. So, so that's basically the difference between a certificate um, and full accreditation. <clears throat> So let's a little bit about the steps that um, you're required to go through when you are becoming accredited. There are basically six steps that I've, I kind of outline to the various laboratories when I talk to them. The first and the most important thing is to choose the standard to which you want to be accredited. And we're going to talk about those choices in just a few minutes. Then you want to choose whom you're going to contract with as an assessing body and they will perform the accreditation. Um, an assessing body could be your state program, um, or it could be any of the other individual um, entities that are out in the United States and, and other countries that perform assessments and audits and grant accreditation. The third step is to prepare all your materials and decide which methods you're going to include in your scope of accreditation. And of course, for this presentation, we're talking about uh, Leech Alert. And then fourth is you schedule your on-site assessment with your assessing body. That's when they come into the laboratory and check all of your quality manual system programs. And they also look at how you're actually performing the tests in the laboratory compared to your SOPs. And then hopefully you won't, but you may have um, some corrective or um, actions um, or maybe some findings or opportunities for improvement. And then after you correct any of those things, um, you will be granted your accreditation. So those are the basic steps towards accreditation. There's a lot of other things that will happen in, in the middle of that, but those are the basic steps. So. Here I've listed some of the accreditation standards that are used in the United States. Um, there are four things that I've listed here. And the ISO IEC 17025, which is the general requirements for the competence of testing and calibration laboratories, is, is pretty prevalent here in the US now. It's become even more prevalent over, I would say, probably the past eight to 10 years. Um, especially for the private lab industry. Another standard that you could use to become accredited to is the American Industrial Hygiene Association's Environmental Microbiology Laboratory Accreditation Program, or MLAP for short. And the MLAP AIHA standard is also based on ISO 17025 quality standards. The third choice is the uh, TNI standard, which is also based on ISO 17025. This particular standard is used in um, 13 states. 14 assessing bodies have that as the basis for their accreditation, um, with California and Oklahoma to be added soon. And then the other standard that is used in um, the non-TNI states in the US is the EPA's Manual for the Certification of Laboratories Analyzing Drinking Water. Um, that is the option for accreditation in the other states other than the 13 that prescribe to the TNI standard. So these are the standards that are used in the US. So if you were ISO 17025 already, and you were interested in adding Leech Alert to your existing accreditation, or adding it to what's called your scope of accreditation, there's a process. And it's pretty straightforward. And it's outlined here. The first step is to submit an application to your assessing body. Your assessing body may be one of the several organizations that are accredited to be assessing bodies. And there are several of them out there. 
What you must do is when you submit your application is have certain paperwork ready. And I've listed some of those parts below. Um, the first thing is you want to ensure that the Leech Alert method is in standard operating procedure format or SOP format. And you want to ensure that that SOP includes your quality control. And when you write your SOP, this is, this is one of the things I make sure I tell laboratories all the time is you want to make sure that you say what you do and then you do what you say. Your SOP has to follow how the method is supposed to be run and you can look at the product insert or reach out to IDEX for some guidance on that, but ensure that what you write down is actually how you perform the method. Another thing that you're going to want to submit with your application is the fact that you have done a, each of your analysts that are going to be performing the method have done an initial demonstration of capability or what's called an IDOC. You want to ensure that you've revised all the sections of your quality system manual to include the Leech Alert method. And you also want to ensure in your managerial section that you've included how you have vetted um, uh, the vendor, that would be IDEX, um, to be an approved vendor. And your quality manual will have instructions on how to vet and approve new vendors. Make sure you include that section. And the other thing you want to include are the results from a successful proficiency test that has come from an accredited PT provider. The next thing you want to do is schedule your on-site assessment with your assessing body. So whichever organization you have contracted with to help you through the adding the method to your scope of accreditation, that's the group that you'll schedule an on-site with. And they will come to the laboratory They'll review your documentation and your record keeping. They'll review the IDFCs, and they'll actually go into the laboratory and watch as the technicians perform the method versus the SOP that you've written. Last thing would be to correct any findings. So hopefully you won't have any, but they're inevitable. And so if you have any findings or opportunities for improvement, you would write those up, send them back to the assessing body, and then they will send you back um, their agreement to your action plan. So what if you decide that you want to utilize the AIHA MLAP that accreditation that you already have? How would you add the method Leech Alert to your scope of accreditation under this program? In pretty much the same steps. You would contact AIHA MLAP program and tell them that you're interested in having a method added to your scope of accreditation. They do have an application online on their website that you can fill out, and it lists all of the pieces of information you'd need to send in. <laughs> One of the things that they do stress is that if you remember in the beginning, I said that the AIHA MLAP program is based on ISO 17025. So in order to um, ensure that you are following all licensure and copyright um, requirements, you need to demonstrate that you actually have purchased and own a copy of the ISO 17025 standard. But then some of the other application materials that you need to send in are very similar to what we talked about in ISO 17025. You want to make sure that you have Leech Alert in the standard operating procedure format, including the quality control. You want to ensure that you've done and documented the initial demonstration of capability for each of the analysts that are going to be performing the method. And then you want to make sure you include the revised sections of your quality system manual um, that will include Leech Alert and also where you have vetted and approved IDEX as a vendor. And again, the results from a successful PT from an accredited PT provider. And then you schedule on-site assessment. And again, the organization will send out accredited auditors. They'll review your quality system manual and all the changes that you've made. They'll review your documentation associated with things like the demonstration of capability and your proficiency testing. And they'll watch the analyst perform the method with the standard operating procedure. And 
you know, if any um, findings or opportunities for improvement come up, you address them with your auditor, you write up a corrective action plan, send it in to the AB, and you agree on the outcome of those, and then Sage Alert will be added to your scope of accreditation. Now we get into adding Lege Alert if you are already accredited to the TNI standard in Florida, Utah, and New Hampshire. Now this might seem a little bit random, but these are three of the 13 states that have um, agreed and added Lege Alert as a method that, you, that the laboratory can add to their scope of accreditation. But if you also remember, the TNI standard is based on ISO 170252. It's pretty thematic here. <laughs> So, what you would need to do is contact your assessing body, which would be the state program here in Florida, Utah, or New Hampshire, and you would submit an application to the assessing body. And then the following steps are very similar to what we've already covered under the other two programs. You would ensure that you have the legal method and standard operating procedure format, including the QC. For the state of Florida only, you want to ensure that you include the package insert that comes with Fugular in your application package. You want to include the data and documentation that the analysts have done their initial demonstration of capability. And you also want to include the sections of your quality system manual that have been changed in order to add Lead Alert as a method to your scope. And you also want to include the sections of your quality system manual that address how you added IDEX as an approved vendor. Now the difference here is that the TNI standard, as opposed to ISO 17025 and AIHA MLAP, require that laboratories perform two PTs. So what you will need to do is you'll perform your first PT, and again, they have to come from accredited PT providers. And then after you get results from your first PT, no less than 15 days after you've done your first PT, you can do the second one. So you can do them 15 days apart. And those results are what you would include in the package that you submit to your AB. And then you schedule your on-site assessment. So again, the same thing. The auditor from either Florida, Utah, or New Hampshire will come to your laboratory. They'll review your quality system manual changes, review your documentation for your IDOC, for your proficiency testing, and they will also go into the laboratory and observe as the analysts perform the method. And you might have to correct you know, findings or opportunities for improvement. You may have to pay any applicable fees to the state program. And then you will be granted accreditation and Lead Alert will be added to your scope of accreditation. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. There is a second option for laboratories who would like to be accredited according to the TNI standard in states other than Florida, Utah, and New Hampshire. So that would be all the other states that are listed here are what we call states that have implemented the TNI standard as the basis for accreditation for labs in their state. So if you would like to be accredited, what you would need to do in any of these other states is you can request that the Florida Department of Health which is the assessing body for the state of Florida, grants you primary accreditation for Lead Alert in your state. So for example, say I'm in Kansas. I'm a TNI accredited laboratory. I have the scope of accreditation and methods from the TNI program in the state of Kansas. But maybe Kansas isn't offering Lead Alert as a method to be added to my scope. What can I do? And this is what you can do. You can reach out to Florida, ask the Florida assessing body to grant you primary accreditation for Lead Alert, and you go through the same process that you would to add any other method to your scope, except Florida will be the AB that you will deal with. 
So you submit the application to Florida, the same things that you would submit under your own state program. The SOP with the quality control, the package insert for Lead Alert, the demonstration of capability from each analyst, the revised sections of your quality system manual, including where you have listed IDEX as an approved vendor, and the results from two successful PT. You will schedule your on-site assessment with an approved Florida auditor. Florida Department of Health assessing body utilizes contractors to do the actual on-site auditing. So you will have a choice of people that can come to your laboratory that are certified to do the on-site part of your assessment. So you will schedule your audit. They will come and they will observe your quality system manual changes, they'll observe your documentations, and they will observe you in the laboratory performing the method. Then your Florida auditor that you've chosen will send all of that information to the Florida Department of Health assessing body and make any corrections or any findings. And then Florida Department of Health will grant you primary accreditation for Lead Alert and you will have a single scope method on your scope of accreditation. This map shows you where all of the TNI national programs are. The states with stars are those that use the TNI standard as the basis for all their laboratory accreditation. And the states that are in light blue will accept TNI standard accreditation as their own. So say, for example, you are in California. California is not yet a state that uses the TNI standard as the basis of their accreditation. But what you can do is you can reach out to Florida and get your primary accreditation there, and it will be recognized in California. Thank you, Patsy. If you have additional questions about how to get accredited for Lead Alert, including how to find an accredited proficiency test providers, call your IDEX account representative. Now I'd like to welcome Matt Fritchie of HC Info. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the invitation to join your meeting. Most of you know that in June, CMS issued a requirement for, for hospitals and nursing homes participating in Medicare to implement a water management program that minimizes the risk of Legionnaire's disease. The CMS memorandum does not give prescriptive, detailed procedures to follow. It simply requires a water management program, giving the facility the uh, flexibility and the policies and procedures toward that outcome of reducing Legionella risk, provided the program considers the ASHRAE standard and the CDC toolkit and includes environmental testing for pathogens. But even the ASHRAE standard, which is standard 188, and the CDC toolkit to which the CMS memorandum refers outlines only a framework for a water management program. It, it basically boils down to these key elements, that the, the team needs to write system information, brief description of the water systems, flow diagrams, write a hazard analysis, which for a Legionella program means that you identify which systems present a significant risk of Legionella growth and transmission, and then for those systems, outline control measures, and for each of those control measures, a limit of performance, a performance standard, and then a monitoring procedure for determining whether that limit was met or not, and then corrective actions for each one if, if, it is, if they are not met. And then there needs to be a way of documenting those control measures and then verifying that they were implemented. And finally, validation, which means to, to uh, establish meaningful procedures to determine whether the program overall is effective in accomplishing its purpose, which in this case is to minimize Legionella. The facility determines then the specific policies and procedures and control measures with which to fill that framework 
that's required by ASHRAE 188. And those decisions are crucial. Ideally, the facilities will implement a program that truly reduces Legionella risk without wasting money on unnecessary procedures. In August, I presented a webinar on those crucial, crucial decisions, outlining seven keys to success with water management programs. You can watch it free by going to hcinfo.com forward slash blog and clicking on the article title, which is Complying with CMS, ASHRAE 188, and New York Requirements, Seven Keys to Success. But it, it boils down, the seven keys boil down to this, and that is to have a smart hazard analysis that's a very important part of the process, smart control measures, specific control measures, and really um, meaningful limits and corrective actions and monitoring procedures for each, training your personnel to do those control measures, executing the whole program well, easier said than done, especially in a very large institution. Then um, smart documentation, so you always can put your hands on your documentation. But the ones I want to talk about most in the next couple of minutes are the sixth and, sixth and seventh key, and that's smart validation and smart remediation, because those keys that relate closely to your businesses. And the reality is that most facilities that test for Legionella make poor use of the test results. Um, testing for Legionella is the best way to validate a water management program that's aimed to control Legionella. There's no better way to validate a program. But for testing to be useful, for the data to be useful, it, 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 uh, the facility must be implementing a good water management program. They must get enough reliable data, interpret the data comprehensively, and respond to it well. And one reason or uh, one way for you to increase the volume of Legionella testing in your lab is is to help your customers do a better job with water management programs, and particularly with um, with sampling and with remediation, which we're going to talk more about. If the facility is not implementing a good water management program, it's not going to be able to respond well and quickly to test results. That's why it's so important for them to have a program in place in order to make good use of Legionella testing data. Facilities without good plans tend to just test and disinfect. I'm talking specifically about plumbing systems. They'll test the water in them and then disinfect the entire system without really accomplishing good long-term prevention and some of them spend more money than they need to. Some of them spend a lot of money and still don't solve the problem. So having a good program in place is key. Another key for validation success is to get enough reliable Legionella data. That is crucial, and the key words there are enough and reliable. And to do that, samples need to be collected at the proper frequency uh, with enough samples per round from the optimum locations within a plumbing system and with smart specifications with respect to hot versus cold water and pre-flush versus post-flush and, and so forth. My, my company, HC Info, offers four online training courses on Legionella sampling. They're about 90 minutes each per course, so it's obviously more material than I can cover in a couple of minutes on this slide, but for the details, you can go to hcinfo.com. You can take the courses. Uh, you can also download a free checklist, sample location checklist. It's not comprehensive on, on all the material, but it, it'll help with respect to that, um, the sample locations. After getting enough reliable Legionella data, it must be interpreted comprehensively and correctly. Um, I've discussed this in other presentations, case studies, showing test results to illustrate the importance of considering both concentrations and positivity rather than just one or the other in interpreting Legionella test results. And most of you know, but, but just in case, by positivity, I'm referring to the percentage of plumbing system samples in which Legionella was found. If you interpret Legionella test results based only on concentration or positivity, you are much more likely to miss an opportunity to prevent disease than if you consider both. It's not just my opinion, a, a literature review by Allen, the one uh, cited at the bottom of the screen, and others published in the American Journal of Infection Control in 2012, makes the same conclusion, that concentrations and positivity need to be considered 
in interpreting Legionella results. Another key to success, particularly to pinpoint and solve problems quickly and at lower cost, is to use analytics that expose root problems and, and best solutions. In LAMPS, the cloud application that my company offers, we look at 15 data sets, uh, 15 total for three parameters, Legionella, temperature, and disinfectant. And on this screen are just three examples that, of, of, of data sets we look at for Legionella. In the top graph, you'll see Legionella positivity and average concentrations broken down by, by outlet type. And this can be very useful to compare results for shower heads versus shower hoses. For example, if you only record data, just call it showers and bunch those together, you may miss an opportunity to do a very simple remediation procedure like replacing those hoses more often, because those could be the root problem. Uh, you'll see that water dispensers had much higher Legionella positivity and concentrations than other cold water outlets. And this was an actual case in uh, the hospital I was doing consulting for. And so that was, um, it was very clear that that was a specific equipment type that needed to be addressed instead of just throwing chemicals at the entire system. It's very useful data. Then. In the middle graph, you'll see that um, it, we, we do a comparison of hot versus cold water as well as mixed water. And then, um, and then you can enter date, date ranges. In the middle graph, I said the middle graph, I, I meant the bottom one before comparing the hot and cold. And then the middle graph shows trends over time. So you can see your progress, how you're doing overall with Legionella prevention in whatever type of system the graph is showing, whether it's cooling towers or plumbing systems. And you can also put in date ranges and check the effectiveness of significant changes. Like if you add a continuous disinfection system, you can compare your positivity and average concentrations before that time and then with what those results were after it was started up. Various comparisons for domestic water I mean, when I say domestic water, I mean plumbing systems, temperatures are beneficial too. Knowing the average temperature, for example, per month in the incoming water, the point of entry, can help you manage water systems better. That's what's shown in the top graph, the average per month. For example, if you have a continuous chemical disinfection system installed, you might be more intentional about increasing chemical dose during the months where you have um, higher average temperatures. Uh, to have a successful water management program, that's what you have to do. You have to anticipate events. You have to stay ahead of events instead of just reacting. And th these kinds of data sets can help you do that. And then another example in the bottom graph, comparing average points of entry temperatures with points of use. It can help you see which systems are gaining excessive heat. The ones shown here are pretty much the same with respect to the differences between the point of entry temperatures and the points of use, but if one of the buildings was picking up significantly more heat than another one, if that light blue bar was farther extended in comparison with the dark blue bar, you would know you need to investigate that to, to see are there broken anti-scald valves at showers, crossover between hot and cold at bedpan washers or janitor sinks, and a number, number of other conditions you can check, but that would indicate to you you need to do that. And if you do nothing but record temperatures and don't do good analytics of that, you'll miss it. You just won't see it. It's, it's really too hard to catch if you're not analyzing the data. So um, another comparison that, that's good is to look at um, or to look at comparisons for disinfectant data too. So let's say the chlorine level coming into your facility that's provided in the public water supply. The upper graph shows a comparison of free chlorine levels in hot and cold water at faucets in, in each building. You can see that for this campus, which is supplied with city water treated with chlorine, the MOB and the North Tower average pretty good free chlorine residuals in the cold water and are able to maintain a residual in the hot also. But the South Tower is averaging much lower levels in the cold and zero in the hot. So the conditions possibly causing that should be investigated. Something is creating a larger organic load in that building compared with the other two. And then the bottom graph for the same campus and buildings indicates a problem with loss of chlorine in the cold water between the point of entry and points of use. Although the, the average reading at the points of entry is, is the same for each building, the South Tower has much 
um, greater chlorine degradation between the point of entry and the points of use. These are just a few examples to, to give you an idea of how a robust analysis of Legionella as well as temperature and disinfectant data can make a facility or a consultant much smarter, really, when it comes to decisions about remediation. And that's where the big mistakes are made. It's, it's, it's uh, by either doing too little, it's in remediation, by either doing too little, possibly resulting in disease, or by doing what is ineffective or unnecessary, wasting money and, and in some cases still not reducing risk. So how can you, as a lab, increase your Legionella testing volume? It's really, it's really by helping your customers just do the right things for them. If more facilities are setting up water management programs and more service providers are setting up plans for facilities, you know, offering those services, there will be more water management plans, and if there are more water management plans, there's going to be more validation of water management plans, which means there's going to be more Legionella testing. So if the service providers, too, are able to easily train their employees to collect samples for Legionella testing and interpret the results, they'll sell more sampling services. You know, if they have more people in their organization can provide those services, they're going to try to sell that more. So it will promote testing. So providing the training can increase your, your revenue. Uh, both service providers and facilities need to respond properly to test results. The facilities need to make good decisions. The service providers need to make good recommendations. That in particular, those decisions may not have a direct impact on your testing volume, but overall helping your customers do the right thing and, and respond properly to test results will pay off for everyone in the long run. So my company, HC Info, can, uh, has some things that might be of help to you. We have training. We have online courses on a number of subjects related to sampling that I've talked about before, and then Legionella control and setting up water management plans. We also have partner companies, companies that have been trained to set up water management plans using our software. We have a cloud application called LAMPS for water management plans. You just enter your water system information. You can create a plan and also document and, and keep the plan updated. So we have a number of water treatment companies and industrial hygiene firms, over 100 in all, that partner with us and are trained to do that. So you have kind of an army of companies trained to, to provide those plans. If your facility customers need them, you can refer them to those companies. Um, they, they are also trained to do our analytics. Some of them, we call them sampling partners. So um, the and some facilities, though, they want to save money, especially the nursing homes we find. They don't want to spend more money than necessary. So just being able to go into the software and create a plan themselves, hospitals too, actually, you know, they're very cost conscious. They have to be. And being able to do it on their own, some of them want to do a plan on their own, then, then that um, – they can do that. So I won't go into more detail about that, our company's services and products, but if you want to find out more about the software, just go to the URL at the bottom of the screen, hcinfo.com forward slash IDEX webinar. Fill in that information, and you'll get an email back with um, a discount code you can, or information on a discount code and, and um, other ways to help your customers. And with that, I will turn it back over to you, Kristen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Matt. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about marketing. Because although the recognition of Legionnaire's disease and its risks is growing, and facility owners are starting to think about it, testing for Legionella pneumophila is not regulated in the way many of the tests that you currently perform are. So you really, to build this business, you need to go out and market. You need to go out and develop your customer relationship. Sometimes the very best future customers are the ones you already have. Think about it. They're the customers that trust you. And they're customers who may directly be interested in Legionella testing, or they may simply be in a conversation over the next several months with someone who has a strong interest in reducing the risk of Legionnaire's disease in a healthcare facility, in a hotel, in a place of business. So you really want to get the message out that you offer Legionella pneumophila testing and do a very good job at it to your current customers. A couple of ways you can do that is use your existing channels, your email newsletters, your Facebook page, 
and say it not just once, but multiple times. Let them know you're offering a new test for Legionella pneumophila. Celebrate when every time you get an accreditation. Remind them when there's a milestone. It's important. Have you, it's a year since the CMS memo, memo came out. Are you doing what you need for a water management plan? You can also take advantage of where your customers are already going. They're going to a particular page on your website to request testing, perhaps to get their testing results. Use that real estate. It's a great place to put a link. Learn more about Legionella testing. Have an Add the Expert button. Or maybe, particularly if you've got an active website or a Facebook page, put in a video that's going to draw them in and help them think about whether they should be testing for Legionella pneumophila. You can also do it the old-fashioned way, paper. Throw in a Legion Alert brochure or an insight with more information about Legionella pneumophila testing in with your bill or another communication. But then, as you think about it, it's not just your existing customers. You're also going to want to get to know folks who are already actively participating in reducing this public health risk. People are already in doing water management plans like the, the ones that Matt just described, the folks who are in providing water treatment services, putting the chemicals in the water can help with that disinfection process. Get to know them. Introduce yourself, because they might not know your services. The other group that you'll really want to introduce yourself to are the public health officials in your city, county, or state, and not just the ones that are involved in, in accrediting or certifying laboratories locally, also talk to the folks on the clinical side who have a vested interest in making sure that everything possible is done to reduce the possibilities of Legionnaire's disease outbreaks in their community. Let them know what your credentials are and that you can be part of the solution. You're also going to have to, if you're building your business, to be a little bit proactive and go out and identify who some of the potential customers might be in your market. Matt made reference to the CMS regulation. Hospitals, long-term care facilities, all need to have water management plans in place. You can find these folks. You can identify where they are and systematically prioritize where you want to spend your time reaching out. Similarly, you know you can identify the folks with larger resorts, hotels in your community, large commercial buildings. It's not hard. You can find the names and numbers and start to reach out to them. Now, you might ask yourself, how do I find who within a healthcare facility, who within a, a large resort is a person I want to talk to? Maybe it's the facilities manager, maybe it's the uh, and facilities engineer, but the best way to identify who's the person who's going to be most interested in ha hearing about services you can offer is the old-fashioned way. Get to know people, do your traditional networking, and, and go to places where facility managers are talking about these kinds of issues, where healthcare uh, professionals are talking about how do they prevent infections, uh, how do they uh, prevent and control infections. These are the folks who, when you begin a conversation, can guide you to the right people who are involved in their process. Talking to them, of course, as you, be, as, as you get to know them and, and uh, have those conversations, you're going to want to make sure that they know all that you bring to the table. We've heard a lot about accreditation earlier from Patsy, and it's rigorous. So make sure that you're showcasing that. It means where you put it on your website, you've got those visible uh, people coming to your laboratory, and wherever it's appropriate and approved by, the, by the, the body, make sure that information appears on your marketing materials. It's a kind of uh, stamp of approval to help you get in the door. You can always go a, a step further than that, however. You really want to establish yourself as an expert in the area of Legionella pneumophila analysis. How do you do that? One of the ways is providing additional information that's not necessarily readily available, providing it to your customers through your website, uh, through articles, whether it's a kind of schematic to give them a sense of where Legionella pneumophila may be in a water system, or whether you've got a, an article that's kind of ready to go in case this becomes topical in their community. If there is an outbreak, maybe a few towns over, the local press is going to want to be talking about it. And if you can contribute and raise awareness about how to reduce that, or reduce the risk of that happening in your community, they'll want to hear about it. 
can't say enough about the value of having local news outlets see you as a resource. So there are kind of low-cost ways that you can build your visibility and establish yourself as, a, as one of the local go-to Legionella labs. I mentioned networking, finding where groups of people who might be interested in this topic might gather. Could be your local chapter meetings of the ASHE, that's the American Society of Healthcare Engineers, local chapter of APIC for infection control. Could be building owner meetings. It could be uh, meetings of facility managed for long-term care providers. Could be your local uh, tourism and visitors board. Many of these groups really like educational content that they haven't seen before. Offer yourself up as a, as a speaker and provide, share what you know. Uh, they'll tend to very much appreciate it and it opens up the conversation. You might also want to host or co-host an event, a breakfast or lunch are usually pretty easy with another figure that's, in, that's invested in reducing Legionnaire's disease risk. It could be a water treater, a consultant, again, infection control person, or you may have a customer who's really out there and being proactive and is really pleased and proud with the water management program that they've developed and might want to share that with others. Find an opportunity to showcase that. And again, you can always provide great content to your local newspaper or online blog uh, by sharing your expertise. Things that may seem obvious to you may not be as readily apparent to others in this industry. Now, when you talk, it's important that you're not just talking to them about your testing. You're really putting the message in terms of what they want to get done. Everyone wants to reduce their risk of the disease. Some of them have some other objectives they want to accomplish at the same time, whether it's the meeting their requirements from CMS or uh, their accreditation requirements. Nobody wants their brand associated with an outbreak, so it's really helping protect their reputation Talk about how your testing solution is a piece of that puzzle. People also really want to make sure they're not going to be called in the court for not having done the right thing. Help them understand how testing to make sure your water management plan is working, is effective, can help reduce that risk. Sometimes you know, it may be as simple as does your insurance company require this? this, this the testing is a part of your water management plan. When you do talk to them you are about testing specifically, then you can highlight the things that uh, they are most likely to value. And I'm just share, we'll share this list that we reviewed on our previous Part One webinar from uh, water management expert Tim Keen. What does he look for? Someone who is sending samples out to a lab he looks for accreditation. He wants to see a lab use a good solid method. He looks at how long it takes to get his results back. Seven-day confirmed result uh, is something he likes. Um, he's looking for a lab that's responsive. The results are easy to interpret and understand and explain. Ideally, are available electronically. Generally, ease of use is very important. It's easy to order samples, easy to get your information. And of course, cost always comes into play. It's a factor. So think about all those potential uh, benefits or attributes that you can communicate to your customers. Think about it and helping customers really get past the things that they find challenging or difficult. Get rid of their headaches or their pain points. Clearly, I think Matt made the case very well, testing is only useful in the context of overall water management plan. So customers, if they're struggling with how to get that done, you can make some of those connections and really facilitate the process of reducing the risk in the facility. Do your home, do their homework, or do do your homework so that they don't need to think through what the different testing options are. You understand enough about their testing scenario, then you can recommend a method that you think will be right for them. One of the other things that you might consider is trying to give, make it a one-stop shop. If a facility is developing a water management plan. In case of CMS, they call out not only Legionella pneumophila, but Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Put together a package that's an on-premise pathogen uh, testing or analytics package that might include not only Legionella, but Sulert. Perhaps they want to check overall water quality. So you might throw HPC in there. Give them some options that have been pre-digested to make it easy. 
as Matt uh, alluded to, sampling can be really uh, frightening or at least challenging uh, to facilities. So provide, point them to resources so that they are sh sure sampling is done correctly and gives them the information they need for a robust uh, water management. And you may even play a role in that. Maybe you provide some kits, maybe labels, help them get those samples from their sampling point into your laboratory. And of course, always, always, no, you want to provide your results in, results in report formats that are very easy to understand. But the key word here is make it easy for the customer. And then you may want uh, you know, to experiment with things that will draw people in. If they have never tested before, had their water tested for Legionella pneumophila, you might want to kind of offer them some, some ways in. And we know that these things sound, might sound gimmicky, but we also know that we've all gone for some of them. The, the, the uh, discount on your first one or your, your free, the free class equivalent. Think, get creative about what could you offer, maybe in a, as a part of a package or an introductory offer that will get people to try a testing with your lab. Think about how you can get creative with enticing potential customers to try testing for the first time. As part of that, you may be able to take advantage of of some of the free resources available from IDEC. For example, we do some national marketing campaigns, and one of the things we offer is to find a laboratory near you. If you are using Leisure Alert for your testing, we, when a customer calls, will send them your direction so you can make your value proposition case to them. We also have collateral that you can use, as brochures that are designed to meet the questions, respond to the needs, of facility owners and managers. Those are available in digital format, post on your web, make available, and it's old-fashioned paper brochures we can send to you free of charge. We also have video materials you can post on your website or your Facebook page, such as this minute and a half infomercial on why it's important to routinely test for the Janella pneumophila, and more in-depth resources, which may be appropriate for your sales team or lab team perhaps for customers who are trying to understand even more about water management planning. Let me leave you with one final thought. What is the action that you'll take to build this market for your laboratory over the next several months? There's many opportunities. Pick one, two, or three things that you'll get done and start to get the message out. Thank you for joining us. We are now going to be moving into the question and answer session section of our presentation. If you haven't done so already, there's still time for you to submit a question using the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. You can also get in touch with us at the number on the screen. So moving into our question and answer section here, I've got a question for Patsy. Where can I get PTs for Lead Alert? Okay, that's a pretty easy one. Um, so you have basically four or five choices, um, NSI, IDEX, um, CDC Elite, and Sigma slash RTC. And we did have a question online too about um, the quick turnaround or what are called express PTs. You can get those from NSI. <clears throat> Another question here, Patsy, for you. Uh, what accreditation is available in Canada? Canada. So most of the rest of the world outside of the United States utilizes ISO 17025 as the basis for the vast majority of their environmental laboratory accreditation. So there are assessing bodies available to accredit laboratories to ISO 17025 in Canada. And you can reach out to any of those if you need some contacts. Uh, we can always help with that. Okay. Uh, question here that uh, could be either for Matt or Patsy. It is, is it okay for sodium thiosulfate to be in a sterile sampling container? Matt, uh, I'd be glad to answer that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, okay. is the short answer. It, in fact, it's um, you either have to have it in the container when you start, or you need to add it with a dropper bottle, and there are advantages to dis and disadvantages to both, but it, in most cases, it's uh, unless you're doing a 
example where you're plunging the water down into a basin, like in a cooling tower or in a whirlpool spa, it's really better to have it already in the sample container because um, you don't need to worry about spilling it. And then you um, and you don't really need to worry about it being too much or too little. Labs know um, how much to put in there. The bottle people know how much to put in there. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a question here saying, how do we get on your accredited lab list? And I assume that means the list that I refer to in my uh, portion of the presentation about uh, labs that are doing testing for Legionella pneumophila. Uh, and that simply uh, request that through your um, account rep at IDEX. And uh, we'll make sure that um, we have that information there. Okay. Another question here for Patsy. Do you have any IDEX protocol or IDOC protocol, excuse me? And if so, how can we get that? Um, so your methods typically will have um, information, like if you're pulling from like standard methods or ISO methods and things like that, they may list how to do an initial demonstration of capability. Um, the TNI standard also outlines the various ways you can perform um, demonstrations of capabilities. Um, you look in uh, Volume 1, Module 5 for that in the TNI standard. And if you're still at a loss, you can always reach out to us and we can provide you with some information to guide you on how to do IDOCs and ongoing demonstrations of capability as well. A question here, I think this would perhaps go to Matt. How do we find a water plan manager? I think what you mean, what you're asking is how do you find somebody to set up uh, and help you with a water management plan? Uh, hopefully I'm understanding your qu question correctly. And um, uh, our company has a network of what we call water management plan partners. They are companies that have gone through our training program and they use our software to set up a plan. And if you go to the uh, URL I mentioned at the end of my presentation, hcinfo. If you just go to hcinfo.com, and then you won't have to remember the rest. You can just click on partners and find companies that provide that service and have been trained and screened. Okay. Um, I let's see. Quick question here: uh, Does CMS re policy? Uh, require any specific accreditation or certification for the laboratory performing Legionella testing? Patsy, can you take a shot at that? Um, sure. I think um, I think Matt actually outlined this that the uh, CMS points to the ASHRAE 188 standard in the CDC toolkit. Um, both of those um, talk about using a laboratory that um, is proficient in their ability to perform this testing and you know in my mind the best way for a laboratory to show that they're proficient in being able to test is to be an accredited laboratory and participate in all of the functional parts of accreditation including passing uh, proficiency tests. So follow-on question for that Pat team we're just got a time for a couple more questions here but you mentioned that Lege Alert is now part of the CDC Elite program. Uh, can you say more? Sure. So the CDC Elite program, I don't want to go into a lot of history here, but it was started in order to help the CDC have a consortium of laboratories that could do work during an outbreak. Okay, and that was the impetus of the CDC Elite program. It's it's not, um, you know, audit based or accreditation or quality system manual or any of that. It's literally a certificate that says you can find Legionella in water. However, you know, the um, the culture is that because there are no federal programs that that use Legionella um, in their testing requirements. The only thing that customers of laboratories have had to point to has been CDC Elite. Um, so what we've done is um, we now are proud to say that Lege Alert will be one of the test methods for current CDC Elite laboratories. Um, it'll be offered starting in March, right next month. Um, and it'll be part of the ongoing program and one of the method choices through the CDC Elite program in both the March and September sample rounds that will be happening. So 
If you have any other questions, you can always reach out. But uh, if you currently are a CDC Elite Laboratory, you're interested in adding Elite Alert, you need to contact the Wisconsin State Lab of Hygiene and let them know by March 5th. Right. Well, I think we are right at the top of the hour now. And if you have additional questions, we did not make it through all of the ones that came through. We appreciate having such great questions. Uh, you can write us directly at water at idex.com. You've also seen Matt's uh, contact information throughout the webinar. If you want to send a question to him and you don't have that handy, feel free to write us at water at idex.com and we'll make sure he gets that information. Again, his website is hdinfo.com. Thanks everyone for attending the webinar and uh, we look forward to additional conversations with you. <laughs>